Welcome back everybody. This is the solution to leak code problem number one, two sum in Golang. Let's jump right into it. So a quick description of the problem. We will have a slice of nums, which will just be some arbitrary list of numbers. Let's say it's two, seven, three, four. This one is just of length four. And we will also be given a target. In this example, let's just use nine. So now what we need to return is another slice of the indices from num that equal nine, okay? So if our target is nine, then the two indexes that add up to nine will be two and seven here, two and seven. So those indices would be zero and one. So then what we would want to return is a slice with zero and one in it. Okay, so some additional parameters. You cannot use the same number twice. So what that means, let's say that we had three and four and three here, and our target was six. We wouldn't be able to use zero, zero here, like if we just use this twice. So we cannot do that. What we would actually want to return is zero, two. Zero, two. So that's not using the zero indice twice, okay? So second consideration for this problem is that we can be assured that there will always be at least one answer. There will always be at least one answer. So we don't have to deal with the case where the array, the slice that we're given in Go, doesn't have the numbers. So let's use an example of zero, one, two, and the target being four, we don't have to deal with this case. We can always be assured that there will be an answer. Now, as with most programming interview questions, the first thing you should really ask yourself is, well, how can I brute force this? And the brute force for this is actually pretty simple. What we're gonna be doing is iterating over both slices and then checking for the target. And then we can simply return that target if it exists after iterating both. So let's implement that real quick. In Go, what that looks like is we can do a four, we'll call this left, and range, we're gonna be ranging over the numbers. And then that's our first iteration. So that's just gonna go through all the numbers the first time. And then we can do it a second time, we'll call this right, range, nums, and then that will go through the second time. Now, notice the complexity here. This should obviously be a n squared complexity because we're doing an iteration on every iteration. So this is a square complexity. So then in here is really where the magic happens. We can do if left plus right equals target, then we're gonna return a new slice of ints with left and right. Now that gets us pretty much all of the way there, but remember the caveat, we cannot use the same number twice. So let's throw a quick end in here where I does not equal J. Let's give that a quick run. And I forgot sort of the base case and go, we need to return nil. Now remember, this is that other caveat, just return nothing since there will always be an answer. Returning nil here isn't what I would consider good programming practice, but for the sake of leak code, this is fine. This gets us to the solution. Let's give this a quick run again. That is the wrong answer. We need the indices, not the actual numbers. So notice here that I was returning the actual numbers, which was two and seven that equal nine. We actually need those indices, which is zero and one. So let's return that again. And huge success, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. So again, notice that this is the square complexity. This is the brute force solution. And in most interviews, if you can get to the brute force, the first thing you wanna start thinking about is optimization. How can we make this better? So we can leave this nil case here. This is pretty much gonna be true no matter what. But what we can start to think about is a much better solution using a hash map. So what this is gonna look like is we're going to create a hash map. We're going to iterate the numbers and we're gonna add complements to the hash map. Now, this is a little different than some other approaches that you may have seen. We're actually gonna be adding the complementary number from the target to the map 
to then access later to return the correct number as we iterate. This gives us the ability to iterate just one time through the numbers. So let's actually implement that. So this hash map is going to look like this in Go. We need to make a new map. So we call that map, and this is gonna be a map of integers, that map to other integers, and then we're gonna iterate the numbers. So for those numbers in the range of numbers, and again, this is very similar to the previous solution, but we're just iterating one time and using that memory cache to find the complementary number. So let's implement that. First thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna check if the current number is in the map which means we found the complement and we can return the indice that's been stored in the hash map. So hash map, and we're gonna do an access with that number. And then in Go, this usually looks like this. If okay, we are going to return the new slice. So this gets us most of the way there, but we're missing the chunk where we actually need to store the complement numbers. So let's actually do that down here outside of the if catch where we access the hash map, we take the target minus the number we're looking at. And again, this is the complement to the target. And inside of that complement, we're gonna store the current index that we're at. Okay, this looks fine. Let's give this a quick run, see where we're at. And we got there, okay. Let's give this a submit just to make sure I had it right. And it's been accepted, awesome. All right, let's close this so we can see all this code in its glory. This is the optimized solution for using a hash map with just a single iteration. So with just that single iteration, this gets us to O N time, where N is the length of the array. So maybe let's use that example again, just to make this super clear, because I think understanding the whole complement side of it is really, really important. So let's say that our slice of numbers is two, seven, three, and four, and our target is nine. When we first go through this right here, what we're gonna be looking at is two, uh, at index zero. So when we get to this bottom part, what actually gets stored in the hash map is going to be seven. Notice this target minus num here. So we can actually put that in this complement here. So target is nine minus two. And that indice that gets stored in there is zero. So then inevitably, on the next iteration really, when we make it to seven, we're gonna look at that and we're gonna say, does the hash map have seven? And it does, that returns zero from right here. So we can return the indices that we're at here, which is one and the one that is stored in the hash map at zero. So right here where we're storing that complement to two inside of the hash map is where all this magic happens. Gives us a really clean solution where we just have to iterate one time. And apparently that runs in zero milliseconds and is faster than 100% of Go answers. Woohoo, we did it super fast. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for watching. I hope this was useful. Like, comment, subscribe for more of these videos and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.